This video is gonna make me, I think, a little bit unpopular. <laughs> oh, print on demand, that magical thing that, you know, I'm just gonna upload a design to some cool products and money is gonna fall from the skies on me. How did I not do that before? Well, if that's your state of mind and that's what you're thinking, I would like to recommend something for your mental health, which is to stop watching this video and most of my videos. But if you are thinking, hey, you know, this is a cool thing, print on a man, Zazzle is a cool platform, but many people are selling on it. I'm gonna have to market my own stuff to actually get sales. If that's what you're thinking and you're ready to do the work, then this video is just for you. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Mayo and I teach creative people how to sell their art online. And this is the Zazzle tutorial series part six, how to market your Zazzle store or any print on a man store now that I think about it. Now, I would like to start this uh, cute little marketing tutorial by telling you the things that are not going to be on this video. Like, for example, how to set up a Facebook ad with, you know, just a thousand dollars a month to promote your Zazzle products. I'm also not going to tell you to become a robot and use some, I don't know, some automated Instagram tool to just send out messages to people so they will buy your products, none of that stuff. What I am going to be talking about in this video is those social media platforms that we all know, but also giving you some pointers. So it's not really where am I supposed to market, but it's also what am I supposed to market? Like, what am I supposed to be uploading onto Instagram or to TikTok or even to Facebook groups? I'm also gonna try to be a bit more specific when it comes to giving you actionable ideas for different types of products or different types of shops, because marketing a shop that sells wedding invitations is not the same thing as marketing a shop that sells planner stickers or a shop that sells dog products. There are so many different ways to market pretty much every shop or business online, and it all depends on who your audience is, what are they searching for, and what do they wanna see from you guys. Also. Where do they hang out online? Do they search for something on Google that can land them into your blog post and then into your store? Are they active on certain Facebook groups? And how can you sell to these people something that they're actually going to have value in and like? So after this very long intro, I basically split today's video into four sections. Uh, the first one is where to advertise. The second one is what to advertise. The third one is why to advertise. And the fourth and last part is all about a website to advertise yourself, but also affiliate yourself, as that is an option that is available for Zazzle sellers. And let's jump right into it with the first section of today, which is where to advertise. Well, I'm pretty sure you all know these social media platforms like Facebook and Instagram and Pinterest and TikTok. I'm pretty sure I'm not saying anything new that you guys don't know. And even YouTube, which could be an amazing social media platform to market your print on demand items on Zazzle or on other platforms. But I do want to start talking more a bit about how are you going to advertise within these platforms. And I think that the first thing that comes to mind would be are you advertising under your name or under the name of your shop, like a brand? Do you have a website for yourself as an artist or do you have a website that is about a general topic? So if I wanted to sell my own art, I would probably be branded under my own name. But if I want to sell cute notebooks for people, like custom name notebooks that are pretty cool, or even custom name or custom family name recipe books on Zazzle that are quite a unique an interesting item, then I would probably be branded under a name of a shop that has nothing to do with May Arroyo or whatever your name is. So whatever that name is, whether it's your own name or the name of the shop, is the name that you'll be using on social media as well as a logo or your photo in case that is something personal. And when we're talking about Facebook, hey, you have a Facebook page. And I don't know if you guys know how hard it is to get people to actually like your Facebook page when they're actually interested in the content that you're promoting there. I mean, I started with Facebook, I think it was seven or eight years ago, 
when I started one of my first blogs and my boyfriend back then, he told me, you know what, I'm going to build you a website if you can bring in a thousand likes to a Facebook page. And boy, that was a hard thing to do without pushing money into it. You're going to have to actually promote content that people are going to want to follow on Facebook. And also, if you do have all of these likes on your Facebook fan page, most likely you're not going to actually get people who liked your page to see your content if you're not going to sponsor it. There was a huge change to the Facebook algorithm a million years ago. I think it was in 2016. It actually became a bit funny because Mark Zuckerberg found himself on the other side of that algorithm and quite alone. I'll tell on that in a minute. And basically that change of the algorithm, even though it's not going to make sense to a lot of people, is limiting the reach, the organic reach of viewers for pages who don't sponsor and give money to Facebook. And that came because there were so many pages on Facebook that had so many likes and followers. And once they got into the point where they had all these likes and they had all these followers, they stopped paying Facebook for ads because they no longer need Facebook ads to get the message out to their followers. And Facebook didn't like it because Facebook likes money. So I did see this change many years ago and I even tested it out in some of the pages that I was managing back then. And the fact was that if you were able to post a post on your fan page and get to like 50 or 60% of the likers of this fan page to see this post, after the change in the algorithm, that number dropped to about 3 or 5% of the people who liked your fan page to actually see that information. But if you put like a dollar or two into boosting that specific post, then the organic reach, which doesn't come from sponsored ads, went up. And as I said before, Mark Zuckerberg found himself quite alone because of this algorithm because he posted on his Facebook page that he will be attending a book signing in person and he expected a lot of people to show up. They didn't because he did that a day after the algorithm change of Facebook, which affects all pages and no one actually saw his post. Huh, fun point. So getting back to actually how you're supposed to market, if you do want to use Facebook and have a Facebook fan page and you want to make sure that people can actually see what you're doing, I would recommend maybe one or two dollars to sponsor a post. That's a boost post option just to make sure you're hitting your organic reach. I'm not going to say more about that because I'm not that big of a believer when it comes to Facebook ads unless you're on certain niches. So for example, if you're talking about the wedding niche and you do have good high quality products for people who are getting married, that could be an interesting thing to sponsor on Facebook for people who are engaged. However, if you check out the end of this video on part four, when we're talking about the website, maybe you'll find something better to post than just your Zazzle link. Another amazing thing that you can do with Facebook is actually post on groups with relevancy to whatever it is that you're selling on Zazzle. For example, let's say you've chosen to take on the crafter's niche, which is everything people who sell their crafts will need. For example, tags to put on their products, stickers and labels. If you go to Etsy stores where people are talking about, I don't know how to package my items, you might find your audience there and you might want to not just flat out go and make posts that are, hey, if you guys need something for wrapping, use these stuff for my Zazzle store, but more like comment back to people asking questions and your product is the answer. Moving a bit from Facebook to Instagram because it does appear to be one of the fastest growing social media platforms to actually advertise things outside of Instagram because of the change that they did to their links. And I'm not talking about the link in bio. Obviously, you still only have one link, but I am talking about the option to put your links in stories. And with Instagram, I do like to suggest something. If you have a store that sells a variety of different products, and you know we're talking about Zazzle, but we could also be talking about Society6 or Redbubble. But if I am taking a Zazzle store, and for example, drumroll, I do things for businesses. I have merch for business owners. For example, they can customize business cards, and they can customize stationery, and they can customize pins, and a whole lot of different products that I made for business owners to be able to customize in various ways, because I did a few designs for business cards. I did a lot of designs for stationery and I did a lot of designs for pens. So what I will be doing in that case with Instagram would be to take 
these items that I made and post them to my story. For example, I could take a pen that is customizable for business owners and post it to my story, telling people that this is customizable and of course, giving a link to that pen directly in that story. I will be doing it with 10 pens and then I will use story highlights on Instagram to make sure that the pens are always there in my profile as highlights. I will do the same with pretty much every merch that I have in my store. Or let's say I'm not doing anything for businesses. Let's say I'm selling on Zazzle. Hmm, so many products to choose from. Back to school items. How about that? I should really make a full tutorial just about back to school shops using Zazzle. If you guys are interested in that one, please let me know in the comment section down below. But let's say we're talking about binders or we're talking about notebooks to study math or to study English. And you did do a really nice collection of notebooks, of binders, of notepads, of pencils, even backpacks or any kind of item that can be for a back to school shop. And you want to market it using Instagram. You will pretty much be doing the same with your stories, link in story, as well as in your story highlights. For example, back to school supplies for kids, back to school supplies for university, back to school supplies for elementary school teachers and stuff like that, putting them in different highlights. So always preserving that 24 hour temporary story within your profile. Another thing that you should really get comfortable in making would be reels because Instagram reels have so much more potential than Instagram videos or general Instagram posts because Instagram is trying to promote reels and trying to get people to watch reels to fight YouTube shorts and TikTok. Instagram reels can be made in so many different ways. Whether you're filming yourself short video segments of these products and then editing them with Instagram reels editor, or you're doing something using Canva. If you literally go to Canva and type in Instagram reel, they have really cool templates where you can put in photos of your product. So you don't even need to have videos, even though I do recommend having your own videos that you made yourself with your own products. And we'll touch more on that on part two of this video. Using Instagram reels is a really cool way to get people to be more interested in your product, especially when in most cases you can even use famous songs on Instagram, not by taking these famous songs and putting them on the video yourself and then uploading to Instagram, but by using Instagram's legal feature to post in famous songs and getting people into the vibe of this product or this niche via those songs. Next up, we have Pinterest. And I think that Pinterest was discussed quite a lot in this channel because I really do love this platform. And I think it was, I think it's like my number one or my number two most watched video on YouTube where I did a Pinterest Redbubble tutorial, which by the way, a lot of the parts in that video, which was horribly filmed more than a year ago, are still relevant today and are still relevant for people selling on Zazzle. But I do want to emphasize something about Pinterest. And I believe that people who manage to sell on Zazzle, as Zazzle is a very complex website, will find it easier to set up Pinterest as well as Pinterest boards because Pinterest seemed like a very complex system to a lot of people who are just used to selling t-shirts. If you have a shop under a brand name, for example, the LGBTQ Pride shop, guys, it's Pride Month. I'm selling so many Pride t-shirts on TeePublic. When are you going to get it into your head? People want to wear the stuff they believe in and who they are. Why am I yelling? Okay. Let's say you have an LGBTQ shop on Zazzle and you're selling different type of merch that fits the LGBTQ community. You're selling t-shirts, you're selling pins, you're selling stickers, you're selling cute notebooks, and even selling wedding invitations for the LGBTQ wedding niche. And that shop name can also be your name on Pinterest featuring all these things. But there are two main things that we need to understand about Pinterest, two main hacks or whatever to get you through that platform. The first being Pinterest doesn't like it when you just upload random stuff. Pinterest has a size that it likes your pins to be on, which is 1000 by 1500 pixels. That's the size Pinterest likes. And if you go to Canva again and type in Pinterest pin, you'll find a lot of different templates with this size to basically put your product photos on that and write some cool text on it and then upload it to Pinterest yourself by linking to your Zazzle store or your Zazzle products. The second thing that people don't really get about Pinterest 
And I could not emphasize it enough. Stop just pinning from yourself. Pin from Pinterest. In fact, pretty much 60 or 70% of your time spent on Pinterest should be pinning from other people onto your profile. And you should do that. Well, I recommend you do that in a non-compete way. And if I'm taking the LGBTQ niche as an example for this, there are so many things that you can do that are not competing with what you're selling. You could pin LGBTQ makeup tutorials. You could pin news about famous LGBTQ couples or anything relating to LGBTQ that you are not selling. There are so many options. And that is the case with pretty much every niche I'm going to take. Because if I'm going to look at one of the shop ideas that we had, which is like everything for the bathroom, obviously you guys are not selling toothpaste or toothbrushes on Zazzle. And there are so many, 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 many pins relating to bathroom decor and bathroom design that you can pin to your bathroom related Pinterest account without competing with your bathroom related Zazzle store. By the way, I'm mentioning all of these shop ideas like kind of quickly because they're still fresh in my head from the Zazzle tutorial part five, which included 35 plus shop ideas for your Zazzle account. Those are 35 ideas that, you know, they're based on different types of products. Obviously, some of these products can be sold with different shop ideas, but obviously there are millions of ideas. I just made that video just to show you guys the options of Zazzle, as well as some of their most unique products like Oreo cookies and brownies and skateboards. Another great platform to promote your Zazzle store is TikTok. And TikTok, yes, is based on video, even though if you actually go into the TikTok system, you have the option to create TikTok videos or reels more in that case, uploading some of your photos. So what I suggest, if you guys want to try it out, just download several designs from your Zazzle store, download several ideas, several photos, and go into those automated filters or basically real planners of TikTok directly on TikTok and click on one of them. They're going to tell you how many photos to choose from and you can choose the layout of it. It's actually kind of cool. I, I have yet to done a TikTok video here. I am thinking about it sort of like a tutorial on how to do exactly what I just said. Please let me know if there's something that is interesting to you guys in the comment section down below, because I do feel like I'm rather old for TikTok. It's like everybody's talking about TikTok and I'm like, I'm almost 34 and I feel like it's a whole new generation. I don't get TikTok. I don't get why it's getting so much traffic. I don't get why so many people are being so successful at it. I just know that they are and that it's relatively easy to start with because this platform is new and trying to push more and more people into investing their time into the platform. I also mentioned YouTube as a part of these social media channels that you can use to promote your Zazzle products. And again, that really does depend on your niche. And I think that the whole topic of YouTube is going to become a bit more clear now that we're going to move to part two, which is what are you supposed to advertise? Okay, so let's go to Zazzle, take a photo, you know, of the mock-up of my wrapping paper and then put it on Instagram and say link in bio and I'm going to become a millionaire, right? Wrong. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, this video is going to kill me. I'm not just telling you guys, hey, just take these products and put them because that doesn't work, especially when you're using generic mock-ups that everyone can see all the time and it's getting a little bit annoying. What I am telling you guys is to think about original content that you can create with your products. And sometimes that does include ordering the product yourself. Because I can tell you it will be a lot easier for me to promote this little cute chica over here when I actually have her. And I can make a video like this with her or a video of hanging her on the wall. And it does look a little bit better than any other generic post that I can take from Society6. It's just facts. I can even combine any video that I'll make with her with randomly. Sipping coffee from this mug. <laughs> I, I have to say I love this mug. I know you're not supposed to fall in love with your art, but I kind of am. I love my cubism girls and boys and non-binary gender specific people. 
I think my ADHD has gotten worse lately. <laughs> Side note. In any case, what I am telling you guys is a lot of those videos or posts could be made so much better when you're actually showing the actual product or if you are showing how to use the product or if you're showing how you made the product. So for example, I could be making time lapses of how I drew these items, how I drew these like nice girls or even sort of photos of where I'm sitting when I'm making them, you know, if I'm drawing them when I'm in the field or if I'm working on my computer, like drinking my coffee and working on some new illustrations, sort of showing the work behind what you're doing to actually give yourself value as a creator and as a designer, as an artist, whatever you would like to call yourselves. And also when we're talking about Zazzle and we do have here a major advantage with this personalized option, you can make really cool videos using your phone or screenshotting your computer just by showing to people how easy it would be for them to customize anything from your store. So if I am going back to the idea of recipe books with your family photo and with your family name. So if you did make a product that is a recipe book that has a place for a photo and a place for people to change their name, literally record screen on your phone or on the computer of how the buyer literally goes to your store, switches the photo with theirs and switches the last name and gets a notebook. I mean, how cool is that that they can do it? And more people should know that this is an option. You could also be making that tutorial pretty much on anything that is personalizable, especially when we're talking about the party and wedding niches where people are searching for these things. And yes, a lot of clients go to Zazzle because they know that they will find this customizable stuff there. But no, not everybody in the world that is looking for wedding accessories or wedding invitations or all that jazz knows that they can find this personalized option on Zazzle. So other than posting really good photos of your products using photos you actually took or place it mockups that are a little bit more advanced than the mockups on Zazzle, and other than making reels and stories on Instagram and making videos of the process of you making the items, and other than, you know, showing videos of how to customize this, you can also advertise on your social platforms everything relating to that niche and that audience. And that can be done by referring to a blog post you wrote on your own website or by just giving that little bit of information or something funny, quirky, or a quote for your niche. So if I'm taking, for example, the LGBTQ niche, if there is like a famous LGBTQ couple that got married or has an anniversary, yeah, sharing their photo and saying, hey, happy anniversary for this LGBTQ couple will definitely go along with your already existing niche, as well as sentences about self-love and self-acceptance, especially about acceptance as well as from the environment. If your niche is anything to do with self-love, self-empowerment, chronic illnesses, there are so many quotes that you could just literally be posting on social media to get people with that mindset to like your profile, not just keep on pushing products, 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 products. People don't like to be sold to. They like to have the option to buy, and those are two different things. Another thing that you can post on your social media that can come along with most of what I just said would be to actually post Zazzle sales because Zazzle already has a coupon code, right? They do have kind of cool sales. Why not spread them out to everybody who's following you on social media? I mean, yes, they can go to Zazzle and see the discount themselves. But what if they're not on Zazzle now? What if they are just on social media looking for something cool? Maybe if they knew that this is discounted at the moment, it will convince them more to click on that link in bio and go to your store. The next thing I want to talk about, and that is part three, is why should you advertise? And I think that I do have something to say here that I haven't said in a lot of my videos. So it is going to be something that I've said a lot and something that I haven't said yet. The first reason why you should advertise is because you should never rely on a platform to give you traffic. Because at the end of the day, these platforms, whether it be Zazzle, Etsy, Redbubble, Society6, exist to make money. And the way that they make money is by recommending things that they think will sell when someone is searching for something. So that gives a bigger advantage to people who already sold on the platform. Because if someone goes in and they search for custom tie 
on Zazzle, Zazzle would most likely recommend the ties that were already sold by people searching for custom ties. Because yeah, they have more chances to make money that way. So that is why it's really important to bring in your own traffic because you can't just rely on them to give you sales at the beginning. And also placing your own traffic into the platform makes Zazzle kind of like your shop better. Now, even if Zazzle is giving you traffic, because I've seen it before, mostly with Etsy, someone said that they shouldn't, like, they don't really feel the need to market their Etsy store because, you know, they get like 20 sales a month. And I'm like, is 20 sales a month enough for you? I mean, what's wrong with advertising a little bit more, especially when it doesn't cost you money to get more sales? And from my experience with Redbubble, with Society6, with TeePublic, with pretty much any platform, once you bring in your own sales, the platform sort of catches up on that and it becomes this big snowball of traffic within the platform to your store. Another reason why you should be marketing your own designs yourself is to get more people to actually know about the platform. I mean, yes, it's nice that Zazzle has 15 million people shopping on their platform, but what if there is someone out there that might be interested in your products that doesn't know that this existed? Do you know how many musicians I know that don't know that you can go onto Zazzle and customize your name on a guitar pick? Do you know? Because a lot of them don't know that and a lot of people from different niches and audience don't even know that Zazzle is an option. They wouldn't even think about going there. So if you're on that platform, yes, market the platform. Obviously market yourself more than the platform, but also market the platform. And the last reason why I want you guys to think seriously about your own marketing is because you don't own the platform. So I've seen this quite a lot with people uh, starting on Etsy, starting on Redbubble, getting suspended and basically losing your business in a day. Even if you're getting suspended for no reason, for actually literally no reason, once you do have your own clients, audience coming in from your social channels, you control the traffic and you can redirect it later on to pretty much anywhere. And I'm not saying, hey, you do this in case Zazzle suspends you. I'm not saying that. But what happens if you are having these amazing products that are finally being sold on Zazzle on a specific niche? I think that the next step, once you have that, is to cut Zazzle out of the competition and work with another print and demand supplier that is a bit cheaper. I mean, they're not cheap. And if you do want to do that, it would have been nice to have a lot of your buyers already as an audience on your social media, a proof to yourself that you can bring traffic into yourself to later on invest in your own platform or even in a different platform. I know so many people who sold so much on Etsy regretting not having their own audience base when they started their Shopify store and started with pretty much no traffic as opposed to Etsy sellers who kept on pushing on Instagram and on Facebook even, you know, referring people from Etsy to like them on Instagram and later on just posted on Instagram, hey, the Etsy shop is closed. We now have our own shop and instantly have at least a little bit more of the clients that they used to have on this big marketplace. And I do believe that that is something incredibly important, whether you're posting on social media platforms as yourself, as an artist or as a brand or a blog. And I also think that this point when we're talking about this really refers to the type of designs that you're doing, because I do know that so many people design what is selling or what is supposed to be selling on a platform, as opposed to people who just want to sell what they want to design. And these are two different approaches to print on demand and to any online business. Do you want to start a business based on what people are searching for? Or do you want to do something that you really like? Basically using Zazzle to promote a topic you're passionate about, to promote something you like doing and can do well to other people. Basically, you know, taking Zazzle as a way to monetize a hobby or something that you're good at. And I really do think it's about time to make one of those videos of print on demand keywords versus print on demand passion. Please let me know if that is something that is interesting to you guys in the comment section down below. I want to get to the fourth and last part of this video, which talks about a website and affiliating yourself with Zazzle. But first, I would like to um, mention two small things. One, 
My birthday is on the 28th of June, and on the 8th of June, I am giving myself a birthday gift from your print on demand stores. There is a link down below in the description to a Google form where you can submit your Zazzle designs, Redbubble, TeePublic, Society6, PayHip, Etsy, whatever you're selling, wherever you're selling it at. And I will be going over these products for my birthday on the 8th of the month, doing myself a little bit of a early birthday shopping. And, you know, guys, there's just two more days left. Would someone please design me a Zazzle lipstick or any kind of Zazzle product? I am literally telling this to you guys. Hi, my name is May. I'm a YouTuber. I just started doing videos about Zazzle. I will be ordering a lot of products from Zazzle to do product reviews. Please design something cool for my birthday. I'll buy it. Come on. What more do you need? And the second thing that I would like to say is that if you like this video and found this content useful, please hit the like button down below because every time you do, it really does help my channel. Subscribe to my channel if you are not yet subscribed and comment what type of tutorials you want me to focus on. Do you want more design videos? I heard people talking about printables. I heard people talking about product reviews or shop reviews, or you just want me to go in depth with one of these social media platforms or with blogging to sell your print on demand items. With that being said, fourth part of this video, which is the whole website thing. Okay, so why do I need a website and what kind of website do I need? And when I say what kind of website, I don't just mean, you know, WordPress or Shopify. I do mean a website that contains what? Because I can make a website for myself as an artist. I could feature my latest works. I can make an about page about how I was educated. And that could be something cool to promote print on the end. But I can also make a website that is basically a blog that talks about things that my audience might like. And if I'm looking into that type of thing, and I'm going back to what we were talking about, about Facebook group marketing. So let's say I am on the wedding niche. Yeah, kids parties. Let's do kids parties. Let's say I'm on the kids parties niche and I'm going to write a blog post about what kind of themes can you have for kids birthday parties and those themes like a jungle theme or um, mermaid theme or I really don't know what kids do for birthday parties. This is so not my thing. Anyway, having five or six different theme ideas for kids parties having designed for all of them, but you make a blog post introducing those themes as good ideas for people when they're searching for theme parties for their kids. And when they're searching for these theme parties, with each theme party, you can have a link sending them to merch that you made that relates to that theme party. Basically things that they're gonna need if they wanna choose that theme party. And if we're looking at, for example, a group of parents trying to exchange, I don't know, information, things to do with the kids, kids activities and stuff like that. And someone asks on that group, hey, I'm planning to do a jungle theme party for my kid. Any suggestions? You have these items, by all means, give a link. But if you don't want to spam the group with your own posts of these, just post the blog, the content, the actual information that people might get. And that will get you much further than constantly posting your links to people who don't care. And this type of system can be done with so many things. For example, where to find custom name gifts for your girlfriend or what to get to your mom for Mother's Day. So many types of things that you can blog post about in your blog website. So you can have an artist website, you can have a blog website, you can have a website that is sort of like a magazine about a certain niche. And that is something that I plan on doing with my Cubism art as well as with another niche for bullet journaling, like how to bullet journal. So instead of writing about my various types of notebooks on Zazzle, I will be writing stuff like how bullet journaling can help you with ADHD. And hey, <laughs> there are bullet journals that I designed that you can use. So it's all about finding something that is interesting for your audience. The same people who might be interested in that product, what are they interested in? And I do know people who made quite a good living from it, for example, with a sports niche, because if you can sell footballs <laughs> on Zazzle, as well as merch that says like t-shirt that says, I, I live for football Sunday, or I just want, I'd rather be chasing a ball. I don't know. I'm, I'm really not a football crazed, but if you can make a blog that basically gives out football news and sell football merch, how cool is that? 
Now, I'm not going to tell you, hey, guys, you all need to become web designers. You all need to become professional bloggers. You must have a website to blog all the time. I'm not going to say that, but I am going to say, and please do that, at least have a website for your links page. At least either do it with WordPress. There was a tutorial about that, or you can do that with PayHip. There was a tutorial about that. You can do that with link in bio. At least make one page, one page out there that includes several of your links. Because if we're talking about Instagram marketing, and if we're talking about Facebook, places where you put in one link when you're talking about yourself, make sure that that link goes to a page that is not so general as a Zazzle store, a page that has several features in it, especially when you can affiliate yourself. Whether in blog posts, whether in a links page, whether anywhere, you can affiliate your own products on Zazzle. You scroll down to Zazzle Affiliate at the bottom, it's usually in the footer, and you apply to become an affiliate. And then whenever you want to share anything from Zazzle, it's being shared with your affiliate link. So for example, if you go to any product on Zazzle, whether it's yours or not yours, and click on that share a little icon at the bottom, you're going to see that you can share an embed code for HTML to be placed on a blog with your affiliate link, as well as when you actually finish setting up a product, you're going to get an affiliate link to your entire store. So you can use that instead of any other link that doesn't contain the affiliate because Zazzle is one of those precious print and demand marketplaces that allow us to affiliate ourselves, earn double commission or just a single commission if someone is buying not from you, which is a super cool feature. I was requested to do a video that connects the Zazzle affiliate, also the Society6 affiliate and my plan on that. The thing is, I want to make that video as useful as possible. So what I will be doing, as I mentioned, the bullet journaling niche, I am taking a small break from YouTube in the next few days and more on that on the 10th of June when I make my official announcement and talk about what's going to happen. But that short break that I'm taking, I'll be using to focus on a lot of other things that I want to do like Zazzle and Society6 and KDB. So during that time, I plan on reviving one of my oldest projects, which is a website about bullet journaling. And I thought to myself that I'm just going to record the whole process of how I'm doing it. My keyword research, the products that are going to be connected from it, from Zazzle, the products that are going to be relatable from this, from Society6, and how do I use those affiliate links on both of these platforms to create a blog talking about bullet journaling and showing you guys my process. I hope that that is something that will be interesting for you guys as that video is pretty much going to take like five days to make. But I, I do think that it will open your eyes a little bit about a different way to market or even treat online products these days. Because I know that a lot of people just think that this is something super easy and, and super fun to just do and get money tomorrow. And that's not true. Our goal, at least my goal or my wish to you guys is not to get rich fast but to be able to build a brand, whether it's about yourself as an artist or about any topic that you like that will last on and on and can carry on with trends, that can carry on and make money if Zazzle tomorrow are dead and there is a new print and demand platform. If Amazon kicks you out and you need a different affiliate place or a place to publish your books. I want you guys to be able to do these things and that only happens when you're in control of an audience and sharing actual valuable information. And if you think that, you know, your niche doesn't have valuable information, that's not true. I mean, I don't really care about football results, but a lot of people do. So to them, that is considered valuable information. There are so many things that we like doing. Even, you know, I remember seeing all these people selling these um, t-shirts. Uh, you can never have too many cactuses. I have a blog about cactus types. And I do believe that when I said this, if you don't know anything about cactuses, maybe that's not something you should be selling on a t-shirt. And maybe that should teach you that the best way to market your Zazzle store, your Zazzle products or anything online is to actually know about the niche that you're making designs for. Because when we did Zazzle part two, comparing Zazzle to other print on demand platforms, seeing how much, you know, Zazzle is so much out there with selling stuff for baby showers and weddings. There wasn't even like 1% in me that said, hmm, that's what I should be doing because I would have no idea 
what to design. I would not know how to market it and I would probably get bored of it after a month unless it makes me millions, which it won't. So if you want to know how to market your Zazzle store, the first thing that you should do is figure out who you're selling to and why. And if the person you're selling to is a mother that wants to have a party for her child and your why is because you want to make money, I really doubt that you'll be able to make a living from it unless you hire designers that know what they're doing and, you know, bloggers to talk about it. But if more people are going on Zazzle to buy this, then for example, t-shirts for chess lovers and what you like to do is play chess and you're good at it, having a chess blog referring traffic to your Zazzle store selling chess related merch will get you more money. So just try and think, for example, about a hobby that you want. And if you want, I will be happy to think with you guys. So comment down below a hobby or something that you like talking about or doing. And I would be happy to jump right into the conversation with you and comment back. Maybe some products from Zazzle you didn't know that could be related, giving you some cool blog ideas or even, you know, product ideas, design ideas, and things you might not have thought about. Because I do believe that it's about time for us to stop selling junk online just because someone says it makes you a lot of money fast and just, you know, start selling something good. And now I'm back to my journal, haha, <laughs> my agenda book, to let you guys know what comes up next for us. So we're on June 6th. We're on the 6th of the 6th with Zazzle Part 6. I did not do that on purpose. I really didn't. Uh, so we're on the 6th today. I don't have a video for you guys tomorrow, but I'll be seeing you guys in two days again on June 8th. Buying your designs for my birthday. Someone please make a dumb Zazzle store, call it whatever you want to call it, and give me a lipstick. <laughs> I want to get a lipstick. I want to get so many notebooks. I want to get more wrapping paper. I want to get stickers. I want to get pens. I want to get so many personalized items. So guys, please sit down. You might actually make a sale and jumpstart the store. I do want to see your creativity and I would love to do it from Zazzle. Um, obviously any other platform applies as well. So on the 8th, I'm buying your stuff. A link down below to submit to that. And on the 10th, my first video on KDP on this channel. And with that little bit of information, I would like to give a shout out to Vanessa from our Facebook group for telling me to watch The Sleepy Pilgrim on YouTube. I have had the best morning so far in the past week. I, I think I have a little bit of a YouTuber's crush and I, I'm obsessed with his content and he actually inspired me to do a similar video that's going to piss a lot of people off in the next few days about all the YouTubers from the print on a man niche who are lying to your faces. And with that being said, that was it for me for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you understand that it's actually hard work to sell on Zazzle. And I hope that you're willing to do the work for something that you do love. Can't wait to see your designs for my birthday and do some shopping. And I'll see you guys with my shopping day in my next video. Bye!